A soldier from Chippenham is currently undertaking the toughest assignment of his career in Iraq. He's helping establish a police force following the overthrow of Saddam Hussein's regime. But it's a highly volatile time with the constant threat of bomb attacks on those seen as collaborating with the occupation forces. Another deadly blow to the Allied forces' efforts to restore some sort of normality to Iraq. Bombers targeted some 500 young men queuing in the hope of joining the local police force. The unenviable task of ensuring the safety of people on the streets falls to British soldiers. One of them from Wiltshire knows the dangers only too well. It did get a little bit violent and consequently we had to form a baseline when the rocks started uh, being thrown and people were being crushed up against a baseline. It turned into a, a public disorder, a uh, riot type situation, so we had to form the baseline, um, ride out the bricking. Uh, which lasted about half an hour. The, the crowd then quieted down. The people who were involved in the, uh, in the, with, the, with the throwing of the, the rocks disappeared and we could concentrate again on the uh, registering of the people. More than 300 officers have been killed since the new police force was established after the fall of Saddam Hussein's regime. And yet, here in Maizan province, up to 2,000 arrive every day seeking to join the police force for a basic monthly pay of about £35. They can stay here for as long as five days before they even reach the Labour Exchange front door. Not long ago, this man fought against Saddam's evil empire. Now he's chief of police in Maizan and keen to learn from the experts. His ambition in order that uh, the, the, the level of the Iraq police uh, should be, should be, um, should be um, a draw uh, to, the, to the level of the uh, British uh, police. police. Handing back power to the Iraqis is at a delicate stage, and Captain Long and his men know they have a vital part to play. Richard Payne, ITV West News. Now to a truly incredible story. Try and get your head around this one. Scientists at Bath University are looking to nature to help them develop an aeroplane the size of a bee. If they're successful, and they're pretty confident they will be, the miniature plane will be used by the military, but it'll also be used to monitor traffic and help in such things as fire and rescue operations. Just a few years ago, the idea of an aeroplane being built to the size of a bee was pure science fiction, but not anymore. There is already a big emphasis on using unmanned air vehicles. We're trying to get rid of the pilots from the many air vehicles. And when you get to the small size, there are many advantages where a, a pilot cannot go or where a larger aircraft cannot go. So that's the, I think the future is, is going to really provide that opportunity for us. These scientists at Bath University are studying bees and other insects, such as dragonflies, to help them develop such a mini plane. They use a variety of high-tech equipment to study aerodynamics. Their job is to work out how something so tiny could actually fly. Engineers have been trying to imitate nature ever since the Wright brothers first took flight more than a hundred years ago, but with no success. We have remote controlled aeroplanes, of course, but what these scientists are trying to do just doesn't compare. The miniature Robo B will be powered by mini jets or even some kind of nuclear propulsion. It will even have built in artificial intelligence. That means it'll be able to fly around a space, making its own decisions about where to go and where to land. Truly mind boggling stuff. But what will it be used for? Well, there are many applications that. You have small spaces, buildings, closures, and it's very difficult to go inside with a large aircraft. So you need to build some small flying robots, such as the size of a bee or insects. So next time you see a bee buzzing above your head, look again. It may be an aeroplane. Neil Cavell, ITV West News, Bath University. Well, it's time for a coffee break now, but is drinking this stuff going to help us relax? New research by scientists at Bristol University shows that while coffee might reduce stress in women, in men, and they're over, it could have all sorts of different effects. Apparently, it actually could increase stress. Well, here with us is Dr Lindsay St Clair, one of the research team. An extraordinary thing to research. How did this come about in the first place? It came about through a story somebody told me at a stress workshop that I was running. And he described a trip to the States where he and his uh, business team normally expected to work together really well, which is why they travelled together. 
They'd only been there a short time and found that they couldn't make decisions, they were arguing and so on. Now that's men for you, I'm sorry, that's got nothing to do with <laughs> coffee. I, I, drink, I drink black coffee, is that because American black coffee is full of <laughs> caffeine and it does that to you? Ah, well, that's what we set out to find out. Um, we wondered if we could find real scientific evidence that the caffeine in coffee or other drinks really could have an impact on people's performance, on their relationships and on their feelings of stress. Why does it only affect men? Because it doesn't have the same effect on women, does it? We're made of stronger stuff. I think so. <laughs> but uh, scientifically speaking, um, we felt that what was going on in our study was that the tasks we asked our participants to do um, belonged more to men. And so they were doing things like mental arithmetic and public speaking tasks. And we thought that the caffeine um, added to the um, pressure on the men in a way that it didn't for women. Briefly, does this mean, I mean, I drink just black coffee. I mean, is there an amount, seriously, that you should limit the amount of coffee that you have during a day if you're in a stressful environment? Um, I think that's sensible advice. And it, it certainly depends on the environment around you. And so if you're somewhere where you're already feeling stressed, having additional caffeine may well increase those feelings of stress. Richard, no more coffee for you in the mornings, especially when you've got public speaking to do. Thank you. Dr Lindsay Sinclair, thank you for joining us. Thank you. Now, a look ahead to the main news stories here and abroad over to Mark Austin and Mary Nightingale in London. Coming up on the ITV Evening News, the face of a man accused of serial rape and his unexpected defence. And if you've ever thought of retiring to that dream home in Spain, we've got a story to make you think again. Plus, the Brits find out who won. All that at 6.30.